today's hunt is going to be all about these guys and straight away we already get to see one of the difficulties of hunting them. They are just so low to the ground that it's rather difficult to actually spot them even when they're only 40 meters away and that can cause naturally a number of issues especially in a situation such as this. We've got multiple gators around us and it's just tough to know which one is the best to go for. I would say a level 5 is probably not the ideal one. But then even still, I think there were two more over to the left. So we'll try to get ourselves into a position for a shot. And we're carrying two weapons that I think should help us with a gator hunt today. We've got both the 303 and the muzzleloader. I'm kind of thinking of trying to use a combination of those weapons on like one singular gator. And we'll see if that can kind of work for us. I don't know what that just was. It looked like that gator got thrown up into the air for a second. At this rate, I think we're going to just have to take a shot. So let's go ahead. 0 4 100. And we can try to get a vital hit in there. And then before we reload the muzzle litter, we're going to go to the 303. And assuming that was the right gator, hit him with hopefully a lung shot. And I mean... We can try to hit that one too. I think that one is going to officially get away. But I mean, a couple of level sixes, I guess a better decision than the level five. And at least in that instance, the combination of the muzzleloader and the 303 was enough to get the gator to go down before it would get into deep enough water. Now, there are a couple of goals that I have with gator hunting in general, because of course we shot the diamond on stream a couple of days at, uh, into the early access period for the content creators, but that was like this one in all of variation, and between the variations that you can get, I think I do like the dark brown better. So there's obviously that, and what I really want is a rare, and kinda as is the case with most rares that we're after in the game, ideally a gold rare, and we'll see if that kind of thing can happen as we're out here today. But we are in multiplayer, I'm sure, as you saw with the chat in the bottom left. And we'll see what that can do for us. So, another level 6 over here. We'll go ahead and get the muzzleloader reloaded. And we might try that kind of same strategy on it. It's going to be about twice the distance, right around 110 meters. And again, we're going to start with the muzzleloader. Because that seemed to be rather effective. And I think we're going to try to stay clear of that leg. Because we only got single lung on the first one. So, just kind of back behind there. Maybe even an opportunity to hit the liver as well. And then, I kind of knew in that area he would struggle to get away. And his health is dropping quick, so... That might be the way that we kind of continue to do this, especially along the river where we are now. And actually, I don't think there's any point getting anywhere. He just barely got, like, into the water there. And of course, they'll kind of disappear when they are at a distance, but... I think he's floating back, and we might as well just go ahead and stand here, although... It might be shallow enough we can run around. I would definitely prefer that. But just to kind of show on the map here, this kind of western coast of the map along the main river, the water gets so deep so fast, bringing them down before they can essentially get into that deep water and drown can be really tough. But we're two for two with that particular strategy, and it might kind of be the way to go. It's tough. I mean, that muzzleloader reload animation triggers. Actually, I have a theory. We should go to manual reload, and that might save us considerable time. And it might make it a little more kind of consistent. But anyway, we have, I think, a dark brown gator this time. Just a silver once again, but I don't know. I just think those look cooler. So in an ideal world, we can maybe find a diamond dark brown. But that, yeah, the lungs are plenty big enough to kind of go behind the elbow like that. And then that follow-up shot from the 303 I think does help. So maybe with the manual reload, I'm going to probably struggle to remember to do it. But I think that might be a good way to hunt them over here. I'm not sure if that guy is trying to get into the water or what he's doing. He is attentive. But even though he's a level 5, I think I'd like to attempt that strategy again. But without the manual reload, it's so much quicker. The only thing is, the angle that he gave us for the follow-up shot was not as good. He may still die in time, because that muzzle loader is quite powerful. It's just sometimes, and this may be an example, we'll see what actually happens here in a couple of seconds. Sometimes it's not enough when they're by the edge of the water, and 
it seems as though he got away. So I think, if nothing else, it does kind of demonstrate the necessity of a good follow-up with the 303. And in that case, maybe we shouldn't have shot him when he was moving. He just got spun around to where our follow-up was, at best, intestines probably flesh. So that's good to know. Good to know the 303 is an important aspect of this. And hopefully, at least for any higher level ones, we can be a little more patient and take the shot when they're sitting still. No way. We've got a level 6, a level 5, and then a level 6 piebald. That is actually kind of terrifying. Just this group of three gators, I'm tempted to try to shoot them. Or at least shoot the one that we're after there before they get into the water. We're going to go back to a 150 meter zero. Now, I don't think there's any chance of that being a gold. Because I think 380 is the number. I wonder if we can just kind of... I mean, when he's moving away from the water, we have to take take that shot. There's no way we can let that opportunity go by. And then sitting still... Oh, you know what? I think we hard shot him. That 303 shot did nothing. Okay, I know we just talked about the 303 being an important aspect, but I guess when the shot is good enough, it doesn't matter if you have a 303 or not. The muscle loader did more than what we needed there. That is so cool. Man, it's not my favorite variation, but it is one with a little more kind of greenish color in the body and around the head area. So we're going to go ahead and take a look here. It is a 365 silver. You know what? It was spinal cord. Spinal cord and lung. And you know, I was actually just thinking about this. I don't know how consistent a spinal cord shot would be, but there are no trophy organs. Like, it doesn't matter where you hit them. Brain or whatever. Like, you don't have to hit a vital. So if the spinal cord shot is consistent, that may be something to actually go for to try to drop them. Kind of accidentally... Got to test it there and it worked good. And I'm not sure I would attempt it on the move often, but he was in that position. I'm not sure why they were all headed towards the water like that, but that's so cool. We missed gold by about 13. 378 is gold. But that's actually neat. That not only gives us something to try to work towards and maybe improve on, as we have a pretty interesting looking scene out there with four different gators. They're tough to spot. Are they all sixes? Three sixes and a five. But yeah, we can try to kind of upgrade our rare gator, not only in the score, but also in maybe one of the other variations. I love the one that's kind of like almost a, a stripe look to it. That would be my ideal. That or albino or melanistic. But to finally get a rare after so long, and it's, it's multiplayer once again, or three hunts in a row where multiplayer has produced one of the things that we are after on this map. It's definitely been nice to actually have internet again and actually uh, work with that, but I am looking at this, it's almost 12 o'clock, it kind of makes sense as to why some of the gators were heading towards the water, but they do rest again, 12 to 1600, so we should have time to continue hunting them. Might just have to deal with a little zone transition. Now, as we kind of move into a different area, it's a lot less pressing to make those follow-up shots and we've got one right here it is a level five once again and they just can't be so difficult to spot but we'll go ahead and take the shot here and we probably still will attempt a follow-up just for the sake of trying to practice with that strategy although it would have been nice to spot him a little more quickly we can see his health is going down but we're kind of in this center river area of mississippi and there's just really not enough deep water for them to be able to quickly escape so He's likely to run around for maybe even a good amount of time since our shooting wasn't the best, but there's almost nowhere he can actually get away. And I mean, that is the nice thing about hunting these areas, but the other side of it is the visibility is not as good. It's easy to spook them without even knowing it. I don't know. Yeah, there's another one just running over there that we had no idea was around. And it can be tough to spot them all. And there are areas where they can get into deep water and say you would spook a level nine or a rare, they could still kind of get away, so that's why I guess I prefer to run the river in terms of spotting them, but yeah, I don't hunt here as much just because of that aspect. And by the way, the blood is right here where we initially shot him, and he's down right over there, but we can be almost sure 
And actually, some of the tracks would confirm that. He didn't exactly run a straight line over here. And, I mean, like I said, that kind of removes the necessity of making a really accurate follow-up shot. And once again, something like we did over there on the river. So it probably would have worked regardless. But over in this area, it's definitely a little more feasible. I was sure, yeah, there is one moving around right over in there. That might be that same level 6. I think the estimate would confirm that, but... There's one right over in that area. Kind of right away highlighting the difficulty of spotting around here. Man, he looks dark, and it's a mythical anyway. Now, I did not reload. There's multiple gators here. I don't even know what's going on. I know the muzzleloader's not reloaded. So there's not much point in trying to hit him with that. What we can do, though, is as he's probably going to cross over here, get the 303 ready and try to get him when he gets... Uh, up out of the water. I don't think this is deep enough for him to escape, so he should eventually surface here, or at least get rather close to us, and allow us an opportunity for a shot. I don't know that he's melanistic necessarily, that was what I was kind of getting at when I thought he looked a little darker, but I don't think that's the case. We did get vitals. This is just insane. The way they're running around. I don't have much fear of losing them, because they don't seem to be able to go anywhere, but we might be sitting here a while. So finally, he went down. The other gators are still seemingly just running back and forth. And if we were in single player, this would be a good opportunity for some respawns. But in multiplayer, I don't want to cause too much hunting pressure for this person's uh, zones in this area. So I think we're just going to kind of get on out of here with our 441 mythical. You know, in some ways, I'd like to say that you know, I experimented with a bunch of different options and kind of came up with the strategy we've been working on of using the muzzleloader and the 303. But it really was just kind of a random thought that I had, and it's turned out to work pretty good. But we kind of get into one of these circumstances once again. It is very dependent on the area, but we're still basically in that center river. It's just a lot deeper and kind of larger water here. So I think we do want, well, don't know what we hit, but I was going to say, I think we do want the 303 follow-up. Once again, a instant drop from the muzzleloader. I want to say we've only had, I think, two gators get away, but one was at the very beginning. I think we hit it twice with the 303. That one wasn't using that strategy. And the other was a poor follow-up shot. Every other one has been effective, and it certainly helps when the muzzleloader just does all the work. But I think this might be sort of the loadout that we carry, and the current loadout isn't ideal for other species on this map. The 16 gauge obviously takes care of the quail and rabbits, the 22 h does as well, but it also covers the uh, gray fox, and then we have the muzzleloader 303 uh, just for like the gators and some of the larger species. I mean, it can work, it's not the best, but I do like it as something to maybe carry, and when you have the potential of running into gators in all these different areas. I don't think it's a bad thing, especially when it could be a place like this where they can escape to just have that loadout on hand. And I'm sure there are other ways, like obviously certain shots that are pretty consistent to instant drop can work as well. But if you're maybe a little less confident going for such a specific shot, I think this can work pretty good. And it's probably the strategy that I'm going to kind of stick with. But I figured on that note, it was about time to come back to our second lodge and place our gator. And I wanted to come in here and actually look at the kind of wall poses. I'm sure most, if not all of you guys have seen them, but I've not actually placed a gator on the wall yet to get a look at them. And I've seen them in different screenshots and stuff. It's very cool the way that they've done these. Kind of similar to the puma, mountain lion, and bear poses. But there's a lot you can do with those. And I think especially when it comes to maybe a gold rare gator down the road or something like that. It could be something to go in the main lodge and allow us a little more versatility in where we can place them, but I definitely think for a rare, and one like this where it's got such unique kind of coloration all the way around it basically, it should be in a full body mount, and we may take it into the second lodge over in Spring Creek Manor, but for the moment, I wanted to bring them in here with the better lighting to get a better look at all of the coloration. Like I said, I think they look really cool. It almost is more albino looking than anything, and then it's just got like the other patches of the kind of greenish color 
you'd expect from an alligator. I think it's really cool and there are, I think, at least five piebald variations. And I hope that's something they continue with down the line with new species. We've seen them adding more and more piebald variants for other ones and hopefully that is the start of something we see more and more. But anyway, that is going to do it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.